Now, as I sat in my office the other day, getting myself ready for Prime Minister's questions, I tweeted, just poured myself a glass of red, some crackers and cheese, all ready for PMQs. It's going to be a good one. Now, I was working. I brought my own food and booze, and I certainly wasn't having a party. You know what? I'm not going to castigate Boris for his staff sitting socially distanced in the garden of their office on what was one of the hottest days of the year, whether it's classified as a party or not. Firstly, this was actually around about two years ago, at the very start of his premiership and at the very start of the pandemic, when it was clear by his actions, like shaking hands with people with COVID and not closing borders quickly enough, that he wasn't taking the thing seriously at all. His behaviour obviously changed a little bit after he caught it and almost died. Secondly, if you cut the head off, another head will simply appear. Nothing will change. All you've done is waste time and distracted the government from the actual business of government. These parties, in particular these latest ones around the time of Prince Philip's funeral, weren't organised by Boris, so it would appear. It seems that those working at Downing Street were those behind it. And they may well have been working there for years under successive governments. To be honest, this looks to me like death by a million cuts. And I wonder who would be administering the blows. Are you seriously saying that no one knew about all this? Of course they did. They just kept it quiet. And thirdly, despite people saying the rules were clear enough at the time, I remember the resounding issue was that the rules were too complicated didn't make sense and were, in many instances, contradictory. In the meantime, as we discuss whether Boris should or shouldn't resign, we face sky-high fuel and energy prices, national insurance and tax rises in April, people living in unsafe buildings due to dodgy cladding and fire safety, etc., inflation spiralling out of control. Need I go on? No. I would like to focus the government on those things. I'm afraid if we allow the distraction of these work gatherings, we let them off the hook. Yes, people did make sacrifices and didn't see loved ones and people died alone. My heart goes out to those people. I mean, it was horrendous. But in many instances, it was the right thing to do. I don't agree with politicians doing their own thing and not following their own rules, but it's nothing new. And it could be argued whether you like it or not, this was a place of work, and that was a work gathering. Were those illegal? To be honest, the rules were so ambiguous in many respects, I haven't got a clue anymore. So rather than wasting my energy on this distraction that looks like a vendetta from someone like, say, maybe Dominic Cummings, I would rather await the findings of the inquiry, but get on with focusing the politicians on running the country. And what about the Labour Party? Well, they can't go without scrutiny. If my memory serves me correctly, didn't Barry Gardner, Labour MP, get scrutinised for breaking the rules by attending a Black Lives Matter protest? He was that arrogant, he even tweeted about it. That's how much regard he had for the rules. The Shadow Foreign Secretary, Lisa Nandy, said what Barry Gardner did was dangerous and he should acknowledge his mistake. He apologised, but why is no one scrutinising them? In fact, some of you calling for Boris's resignation are no better and even went to the Black Lives Matter illegal protests yourselves. Way more than 100 people there. And what about the people who went to the beaches, knowing full well how dangerous it was to mix in this way, travelling further than the agreed distance, destroying beauty spots in their wake? People didn't wear masks and break the rules daily. I know, because I would tell them off. And whilst we're at it, I'd like to find out exactly what the Labour Party stand for and how they plan to run the country, and in particular the economy. They've managed to evade answering this thus far. If we depose of Boris, they have a fighting chance. So what are we getting? We, the British public, have to also take some responsibility. I mean, this virus was spread by human behaviour. Look at places like China and Japan, who stoically followed the lockdown rules. Their death rates, if they're to be believed, were considerably lower. If you take the emotion out of this, human behaviour is the reason why this virus spread the way it did. We had one of the highest death rates across the world. 
our behaviour as a society was absolutely part of the problem. Those in government castigating Boris have their eye on power. And yes, the parties are unacceptable. But who are the civil servants organising these gatherings? This is a rot from within. Rather than blaming Boris, how about we find out who is actually behind them? Boris took a gamble with the vaccines and PPE, protected jobs and the economy. I'm not defending him, but I'm afraid I don't believe any of the others would have done a better job. And if you'd left things to Keir Starmer and his clan, we'd still be in lockdown. And what about Brexit? I think this tweet from Lord Adonis sums it up. If Boris goes, Brexit goes.